What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be reviewing the board game Zathra. This game came out from the Pressman Corporation in 2005 and it is for two to four players. The object of this game is you are trying to be the first ship to reach the planet Zathra before your house is completely destroyed. So let's show you how the game works. Okay everybody, let's go ahead and show you the game components. Right here we have your game board and uh, it's a pretty cool little game board. It's got a few of these 3D designs on here. It has this 3D track. Uh, this is the planet Zathra with its entrance. This right here is what is called Saurus 3. If your ship ends up landing on here, it's going to get sucked in like so. And uh, the only way you're going to be able to get out is if somebody ends up rolling an even number. Uh, so you'll be stuck in there until somebody does that. And when that happens, you'll just simply uh, use the ship and lift off and continue moving along the board. And uh, you have your spaceships over here that you're going to be moving uh, with this little uh, spaceship bridge of sorts uh, in order to move it. This actually has a couple of functions. Uh, you'll spin the little spinner here and whatever you spin, you'll move your ship that many spaces. So in this case, you would go one, two, three, and it goes all the way up to nine. Um, another thing this thing does is on your turn, you're going to receive an order from this unit. And what you'll do is you'll simply turn this key and hit the go button and it will spit out an order. And then you will just simply follow what it says. Right here you have a house that is composed of eight puzzle pieces. Now what you're trying to do is you want to make sure that this house does not uh, get destroyed before you reach this planet. If it does, you and everybody else is going to lose. Um, but there will be certain events in the game that are going to risk taking a piece away of the house like so. And uh, you'll have a chance to defend against it. And I'll talk about that in just a bit. Now here are what are called defense tokens. Uh, there are a few of them throughout the game. If you land on one, you're going to go ahead and pick it up. And there's three different ones. Uh, there's fire, um, there's the astronaut, and then there is the reprogram and these are going to uh, protect you uh, from different types of attacks that you're going to be receiving uh, from the bridge over here. We also have a robot over here and the robot is going to be moving throughout the game depending on the order and a lot of times this robot is going to be attacking you and uh, you'll have an opportunity to defend yourself if you happen to have the correct defense token. Uh, so let's just go ahead and show you some of the things that can happen uh, when you get attacked. Uh, one thing you can pull is one that says robot defects, robot attacks ship closest to him. And what would happen in this case is let's just say we had a ship over here and he was the closest. The robot would go ahead and go to him like this. Now, if you end up landing on the robot uh, by exact count, you're going to end up moving back five spaces as well. Um, but in this case, uh, the robot's going to attack the ship closest to him. So what's going to happen is you're going to look to see if you happen to have the reprogram token. You or your opponent can have a reprogram token. Uh, if you have it, you can just simply... Uh, cast it in and the robot will not attack you and he'll stay where he is. Now if another player happens to have a reprogram token uh, they'll go ahead and turn it in and the robot will go ahead and move back to its original space. Uh, now if you're not able to defend against the robot uh, you yourself are going to move back five spaces. There's going to be times when you're going to be asked to defend uh, the house if the robot attacks you. Uh, here's another card it says you pass too close to a czar and attack zorgons defend or damage the house and that's what it will say. Uh, so what you're looking for with the zorgon is you're looking for either a fire token or an astronaut token. Uh, if you happen to have one of those against you'll turn it in and you'll stop the attack. If your opponent happens to have one and he gives it to you, you and he or she will switch places so you would if you were over here and your opponent was over here uh, you would just simply switch places like this if he happened to have a card. If no one had a card then you're going to have to take damage to the house so what you would do is you would just take one of these puzzle pieces and knock it out of the game like that now there are also cards that say attempt to navigate and here's one says traveling towards Favron V's many moons attempt to navigate uh, so depending on what space you roll land on if it's a white or a blue or a red what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the astronaut die now if you land on a white space um, only you're going to be the only one that's going to be able to roll the die. And what you're going to try to do is roll safe. In this case, I rolled safe. Uh, everything would be good. If I happened to, however, not roll safe, I would lose a piece of the house. Right. Now, if I landed on a blue space, uh, I would be able to choose another player to take a roll of die. So I'd be able to increase my chances. And if I landed on a red space, um, then everybody would be able to roll the die. Um, and you only need to roll the safe once in order to be able to navigate and not risk getting damage to your house. Now if you land on a uh, shooting star space, which is one of these over here, let's say you landed here and you had a ship that was up here, uh, you would be granted uh, the leadership position. So what would happen is you would move all the way up in front of the leader 
like so. Uh, once you get up to this section, the robot is not going to be able uh, to move up there. Now, my wife and I disregard that rule to make the game harder, um, but you don't have to do that. So now what happens is once somebody gets over here to the very end, um, on their next turn, they're going to be able to spin this planet over here. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get this little orange hole to match up with the space. And I just did that. And if they're able to do that, they're going to win the game. If they are not, uh, the rules I don't think say this, but I think you're supposed to do this anyway, is uh, you will go ahead and uh, take an order from... Uh, the console and go ahead and follow it. Sometimes it's gonna have you moving back spaces, sometimes it's gonna have you navigate through fields or whatever. That's basically how the game works. Uh, you're going to uh, start moving, you're gonna to try to collect some of these defense tokens, you're gonna to try to keep your house in order and keep it from getting destroyed. And um, the first person that is able to enter is not only gonna win the game, but they are gonna save the house. If it turns out the house ends up getting completely destroyed uh, via navigational problems or whatever, then the game is gonna end and everyone's gonna lose. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Zathra Adventure is Waiting. So my final thoughts on Zathra Adventure is Waiting. Well, I'll go ahead and start with the game board. Really like the way the game board looks. I like the little 3D tracks that it has. Um, I love the little unit where you can uh, pop the cards out. I think that's really, really cool. Um, pretty cool looking design for the board. As far as the gameplay goes, this is one of those games, again, that is highly based on luck. Um, it's a spin and move game, basically, and you don't really have any control as to what's going to happen or where you're going to go because it's determined by the cards, it's determined by uh, what you spin, and it's determined by the asteroid die. Really, the only decision you have to make is if there's a threat of somebody losing the house and you might have a token that could keep that from happening. Really, that's all it comes down to. Um, so, this game is basic. Uh, there's really, uh, as far as the gameplay goes, nothing really special about it. Uh, my wife said this is not her favorite game. Uh, this is a game probably would uh, do well as a filler, I would guess. Um, but there really isn't anything special about it as far as the gameplay goes. Uh, the board design, again, looks really good. Now, I think there's some ways you can improve this game even though it is highly based on luck. Uh, one thing you can do is you can allow the robot to go up on the track. Uh, that can make the game more challenging. And you can also use uh, the asteroid space and the space with the explosion on there as something too. Saying if somebody lands on the asteroid, you have to roll the asteroid die. And if someone lands on the explosion, they have to go all the way back to start. Uh, so there's little things you can do to make this game more challenging. The way the rules are, um, my wife and I managed to finish the game with only losing one house with the original rules. When we implemented the changes, it was the exact opposite. We had one piece left before I was able to spin the planet and get to it. Um, so that made the game more challenging. Would I recommend? Well, I guess it really depends on uh, if you like games that are spin and move of that nature. It's a cool design, so if you can find it for cheap, like at a flea market or something, I'd say go ahead and get it. Uh, but I really wouldn't recommend getting it for more than that. I think this game goes for around $20 or so on eBay plus shipping. Uh, I probably wouldn't spend that much on it, but uh, this game does seem to sell uh, when it is online. So, uh, and since it is based on a movie, maybe it's part of a collector's item of sorts. I'm not really sure. But anyway, guys, that is my review of Zathra Adventurers Waiting. Y'all take care. Keep on gaming. We'll see you later.